years. Um, well, kind of just since you brought that up, um, from Kalen's perspective this week, as a head, since you have experience as a head coach, what's that first game like when you're a head coach at your new school for the first yeah, time? Yeah, you know, I think – I think we'll find out a lot about ourselves and just kind of where we are. And I know we have a lot of excitement. I know we put in a lot of work, uh, but the first game kind of reveals a lot of, you know, uh, everything, uh, what you're doing well, what, what you need work on, and you're trying to constantly improve. And obviously in the moment, you're trying to do everything you can to perform, uh, lead yourself up with great preparation to uh, put yourself in a position to win. Uh, and it's about, it's going to be about performance in the moment. And uh, we got some younger guys, so we'll get a good feel of, of their first, uh, you know, collegiate experience in, in, in Brian Denny and that kind of atmosphere and stadium. But we're really looking forward to just the experience and then doing what we need to do in the moment to get ourselves prepared to go, uh, hopefully go come away with a W. Just talking about that younger guys getting experience, how much is this first game of I mean, I'm sure it, part of it is trying to figure out who your starters are at the secondary, but is it also, let's see how many guys we can get experience in this game? Well, I think we got to continue to build depth all the way through the season. Um, uh, if you look at, you know, I learned this from Mike McCarthy when we were in Dallas with the Cowboys, and he talked about his Super Bowl experience when he was in Green Bay and how many different players that he had to use. Um, and you, you kind of go into the season and maybe you may have a starting guy, you may have a backup guy, you may have guys that have maybe earned certain roles on the team, but things are always moving and changing. And what you're always trying to do is raise the floor of your roster, raise the ceiling of your roster, and improve every single guy in the room. So we're very aware that you know we're going into a game with a depth chart, we're going into a game with maybe a rotation, who we'd like to get in. But as the season goes and continues, we don't know who's going to be called upon in the moment to go in for, an, uh, for a certain uh, um, a moment in the game or even an entire game or maybe a guy that you think is a backup guy right now you're gonna to have to have that guy ready to go win maybe in October November December the way college football playoffs are kind of laid out now they're long seasons I mean this really likens the NFL seasons where training camps in you know late late July you get August training camp and and then you're playing football you know all the way from August all the way potentially through January so it's a long year you got to have a lot of guys uh, ready to go you got to have a lot of depth built and so uh, we're, we're constantly thinking about how we continue to improve and develop guys on the roster also talking about younger guys, Malachi Moore was voted a captain. He's obviously not a younger guy, but he's voted a captain second year in a row. How does his leadership kind of help all the younger guys or really just the inexperienced in the secondary? Yeah, I think first with uh, Malachi, you see an experienced guy that's made plays in big time games. So he's he's got the trust and the respect of the locker room. Um, and, and that is very evident. Uh, you know, it's a byproduct of him being captain because of his process and who he is and how he does what he, uh, how he goes about his business every single day. Uh, but, you know, he's got, he comes from, you know, one, I think he's got pure motives. You know, how do you define leadership? I think a lot of times is your ability to make a positive impact on the guys around you, make a positive ripple effect on people around you. And I think he does that in a great way. Um, he's got a great uh, way about himself in terms of uh, being able to move the needle with guys, being able to get guys' attention. And, um, you know, it's very evident by, by, by being named captain by his teammates uh, that he's got that trust and respect. And he goes out there and he plays at a high level. So he's invaluable. We love what he brings to the table. We've enjoyed the experience that we had. We're trying to soak up every moment that we had with him, knowing that this is his last year of eligibility and uh, he's been he's been one of the greats here yesterday a couple of the, of the guys talked about the football is fun for them right now and that's something this coaching staff has kind of established maybe putting it in perspective do you feel like that's something you kind of emphasize or, or why is that a message that's kind of come from the coaching staff yeah I think you know what's fun about football the the byproduct of fun is when you do your job along the way and you make plays and you're having success um, so I think uh, we want to have a byproduct of fun because we've committed ourselves to doing things the right way along the process. Uh, we do all the small things right. We do it right the first time. We can make immediate right decisions and we can do the next right thing in the moment. And if we can carry that kind of discipline about ourselves over and over again, I think the byproduct of making plays makes the game experience fun. And so, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, why'd you start playing the game? Because guys had a great experience going out there, running around and, and having fun with the game. We never want to lose sight of that, but in order to have that fun, you want to do things right uh, throughout the process to earn the right to have fun.